let exposure, an overview. Since ancient times, the toxicity of lead to humans has been known and remains undisputed. In the past, epidemiological studies mainly focused on the overt, toxicity associated with high levels of occupational exposure to lead. However, recent studies have revealed that low-level environmental exposure to lead is also associated with adverse health effects, especially in children. People are exposed to a hazardous substance or contaminant through an exposure pathway. A complete exposure pathway must, by definition, contain the following five components. A source of contamination, an environmental medium and transport mechanism, a point of exposure, a route of exposure, and, an exposed population. Let us consider these five components in the context of lead exposure. Picture an old home that has lead-based paint on the walls, this would be the source of contamination. During the course of minor repair work, some of that lead-based paint filters down to the floor in the form of lead-containing dust, this would be the environmental medium and transport mechanism. A young child drops his toy on the floor and it gets coated with the lead-containing dust, this is the point of exposure. The child picks up the toy and continues to play with it, often putting it in his mouth. This is the route of exposure. This child in his home environment is therefore considered the exposed population. Almost everyone is exposed to lead to some degree due to its presence in the environment. Let us take a quick look at each type of exposure. Inhalation is the primary route of exposure for workers in industries that involve lead. Inhalation of lead is enormously serious because almost all inhaled lead is absorbed into the body. Lead is also a component of tobacco and tobacco smoke, which means inhalation of lead is not just an occupational hazard, but one that impacts individuals who smoke, along with their families. Ingesting food and water contaminated with lead is another way lead enters the body. Handling food, cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or makeup with contaminated hands will all contribute to lead ingestion. In the United States, the general population is not likely to encounter forms of lead that can be absorbed through the skin. One major source of dermal exposure in the past was leaded gasoline, which could easily absorb into the skin and damage the brain and nervous system. However, now that leaded gasoline is banned, this threat no longer exists for most people. However, while dermal exposure is not a threat for the general population, it is still a possible route of exposure for some workers. Organic lead can be absorbed through the skin, inorganic lead cannot. Therefore, people who work around organic lead compounds are most at risk for dermal exposure. Embedded or retained foreign bodies that contain lead, such as retained shrapnel or bullets, may be an ongoing source of lead exposure. Therefore, People with a military history or those who have experienced a penetrating trauma may be at a higher risk for lead exposure. Transplacental exposure to the unborn child can happen if the mother is exposed to lead. Once lead is absorbed into the mother's body, it may pass on to the developing fetus. Furthermore, Lead that is stored in the mother's body from previous exposures may be released again into the bloodstream in times of calcium stress, such as during pregnancy, lactation, or osteoporosis, and make its way into the tissues of the developing fetus, resulting in adverse effects. Therefore, employees who are pregnant or who are actively seeking to have a child should request a medical examination or consultation to discuss any previous lead exposures. Employers must make these consultations available for their employees, 